Hey there, and welcome to a Studio Calico video with me, Lisa Spangler. Today I'm going to be sharing some fun techniques that you can do with your stamps and pigment inks. And I'm going to be working with this Sunburst stamp set by One Little Bird. And I'm going to be working with watercolor paper. I've already trimmed this paper to four inches by five and a quarter inches. And I'm also going to be using my Misty stamp tool. This is totally optional. You don't need to use this for the techniques, uh, but I find it's really helpful to use it. So if you've never seen this in action before, you just take some magnets and put your paper in a corner and this will hold it in place so that as you're stamping, the paper won't move and you can keep stamping over and over and you know for sure it'll be in the same place as what you started with. And what I really like about this tool is it lets you position your stamp exactly where you want it. So here I am getting the sun kind of, the sun rays kind of in the middle here. Then you just close the lid and you give it a little press and then the stamp will stick to the lid just like that. Then you can go ahead and ink up your stamp like normal. Here I'm using the Studio Calico Color Theory Sunny Day pigment ink and this is pigment ink that we're using today for these techniques. So um, then once your stamp is all inked up you can just give it a good press and you're ready to go. Next, I'm going to share you some fun techniques that you can do with the center of the sun. So that's that solid piece that's right here in the center. And solid stamps can be a little bit tricky to get a good impression. So that's one reason that I really like the Misty tool, aside from being able to position it exactly where you want it, like I said before. So then once again, you just close the lid and that will pick up the stamp on the lid. And then I'm going to show you a fun inking technique here. So I have the stamp, I'm getting it really nice and inked up. And before I stamp it, I'm going to get a post-it note and I'm going to put it over where the stamp would go just to like put it there. You can use scrap paper if you don't want to use post-it note. And what this will do is remove some of the ink so that then when you go ahead and stamp it, it's a lot lighter than if you had stamped it without removing some ink first. Now I'm going to ink just the edges, just like that, and then stamp it in place again. And this will kind of uh, make the edges a little bit darker, as you can see there. And then to add a little bit more dimension, I'm going to clean this off and then I'm going to use this kind of orangey color. This is the mango color from uh, Impress Stamps. So just inking up the edges there. Then I'm going to take a um, tissue and then just kind of lightly tap on there like that and then stamp it. And this time you'll just get a light kind of um, impression there that really adds dimension. So next I'm going to stamp the face of the sun. And this time, instead of using an ink pad, since the eyes and the smile and the little cheeks are so tiny and I want them to be different colors, I'm going to use markers to add the color and then stamp. And then you'll see how this works. So there is the pink for the cheeks. And then I've zoomed in so that you can see this. And then just adding the black to the mouth and the eyes. And you just want to use a water-based marker for this. A Copic marker won't work. Then you just go ahead and stamp. And now for the really cool part of the technique. And that is embossing this whole thing. I'm going to be using clear embossing powder, but you could also use a sparkle clear embossing powder. And the great thing is, is that that pigment ink is juicy enough. And you can see I didn't really rush or go too fast, but the pigment ink is juicy enough so that the marker will still get embossed. So I'm just putting on tons and tons of the embossing powder so I make sure I get it all covered. 
And then I'll go ahead and heat set this with an embossing tool. And here it is after it's been heat set with the heat gun. You can see how shiny that is. And then next I'm going to add a background wash with some watercolor. This is a blue from the Gansai Tambi set. And I'm just working on a plate. This is just a plain porcelain plate that I picked up at Ikea and I like spreading out some color on the plate like this and adding a lot of water because this way I'm not using it straight out of the pan so it makes it where I can keep going back and picking up more color from this and I'm not going to get it too dark or too light it's going to kind of be the same so once again, I've embossed that sun because if you tried this without embossing first, it would make a big mess because pigment ink isn't water resistant. But since it's embossed, it is. And I'm just kind of going over this and adding some color. I'm not being really careful here. I'm just being kind of random. And I'm putting it on kind of light at first. And then I'm going to go back and add some darker color to deepen it up. So here I am picking up some more blue from the pan. And as you can see, that's a lot darker. But I'm mixing it in with the blue that I already had so it won't be too overpowering. And then I'm just going in here and I'm just adding it kind of in random places here and there. I'm not going over the whole thing. So let me zoom in here so that you can see it better. And there's like this little light patch right here that looks kind of funny and is sticking out. So I'm going to add some more color there. But you want to be careful not to overwork this too much because kind of the variations in the color is what really makes it cool. So I'm going to stop adding watercolor there. I think that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to take a baby wipe and I'm just going to wipe the face of the sun. And this will remove the watercolor that's beaded up on there. And I like to do this before the watercolor has dried, but if you forget, you can always use a baby wipe and go over it after it's dried too. You just have to be more careful not to touch the watercolored areas that you want to keep. So then I went ahead and finished up the card. I just added some sequins here and there and then stamped the Sending You Sunshine sentiment that's also in the set. And then here's a close up so that you can see the sun better with the embossing. So thanks so much for joining me and I hope you give these techniques a try.